going to start this week's video a little bit differently. Doug Moore from Pole Barn Productions on YouTube sent me a package. That is a good looking sticker. And in that package is some beautiful wood. China Berry. Doug had turned some a couple weeks back and I made a comment that I'd never even heard of it. And uh, that prompted him to send me some, which I really appreciate. It's really pretty wood. I like the grain. I like the color. Doug had uh, CA glued all the cracks there that you saw. And also in his video, he mentioned that uh, the wood might have been wet because it had checked on him badly when he was turning. So there I was just using the moisture meter to get an idea. And although a, a probe type moisture meter only tells you what's going on about an inch deep, uh, it was fairly consistent all the way around to about, uh, as, as high as it got was about 9 point something uh, percent moisture. Okay, this is something else I get a lot of questions about. So this is the bottom side of my bandsaw circle cutting jig. That's the miter slot guide that goes right in the miter slot there. And that is the stop block, which stops the whole thing at a certain point from moving forward any farther, as you'll see. Now you draw your line 90 degrees out from the blade, from the very front tip of the cutting edge and you drill your holes about a half inch apart if you're using quarter inch dowels like I do. I'd say the most important part in that is making sure that your line comes out directly from the front cutting edge of that blade. Otherwise, there's gonna to be too much side stress as you're cutting. It makes it less safe. Somebody recently also asked me uh, why sometimes I use this uh, circle cutting jig and, and sometimes I don't. Uh, the best time to use it is when you're working with uh, logs and you've got an uneven uh, surface and can't really mark a circle like on flat stock where you could just hold it up to the saw and just follow the line and cut the circle. So hopefully that answers that question. So here I'm just mounting a worm screw into my chuck and then using the hole I just drilled uh, to mount the piece onto the worm screw. And as usual, I work on the outside and bottom of the bowl first. So far I'm really liking the feel of this wood under the tool. Feels like a combination of hardwood and softwood, so it's, it's in between there somewhere. Uh, but it does turn nicely, I think. And here I'm just cutting the mortise, which is what I'll use to, to reverse mount this bowl onto the chuck, uh, using the four jaws to expand outward and grab that mortise wall and hold it in place. But before I turn it, I need to establish the foot and do the final shaping of the outside of the bowl. I really enjoy seeing what you all are making out there. So much talent in this audience. I'm just happy to share it. 
I'm happy you're a part of it. Cortland Hunt made these beauties. Just works of art. Check them out on Etsy. LT made these bowls for his daughter and wanted me to make sure I pointed out that he was inspired by my technique. I appreciate that, LT, but I gotta say, man, good work. Good work. I want to take the time to not just write it on screen, but also say how thankful I am to all of you that have subscribed. It just blows me away. I'm very grateful. Thank you very much for your support. I thought I had done the final shaping of the outside of the bowl uh, before I flipped it, but after I had it mounted, I looked at it and decided that I wanted to change the angles a little bit. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. That looks better. To this point, I was running at about 850 RPMs. And I'll do the rest of the bowl, uh, other than the sanding, at 1500. Now this might not be the best uh, video angle, but it does give you a look at how I uh, ride or glide the bevel down the side of the bowl in a traditional push cut and then transition into sheer scraping across the bottom of the bowl, all in one movement. If you do this, you have to be really gentle and deliberate because if you push too hard, you're going to get a check on the bottom. Much of the sanding on this bowl has to be done uh, just like you see in here because you can't have the lathe running and run sandpaper across a natural edge bowl without uh, sanding way too much off the leading edge of the bowl and not enough off the trailing edge of whatever edge hits the sandpaper if you understand what I'm trying to say there. I guess to put it more simply, the sandpaper is going to bounce and skip some areas. So it's best just to do it like you see here. And here I'm adding denatured alcohol just to raise the grain so I can deburr it and then finish sanding all the way up to 500 grit. Just three coats of clear shellac rubbed in and look at that grain that is some nice grain and it's also got some chatoyance in it it's got some flash going on which you'll see very nice thanks again Doug I turned the walls and base of this bowl down to a nice even one quarter inch.
as the bowl turns here, you can see uh, that chatoyance I was talking about. Nice flashes of color. Looks even better on the bottom of the bowl. Look at that. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Semper Fi.